Now you may have seen me mention on this channel that I am working with 30 acres, but my fenced pasture is actually only 23 acres. The remaining acreage is taken up by a pond and a residence. And while sometimes we do graze the two acres that the residence sets on, it doesn't usually work out super well to put the animals in the front yard. The front yard, backyard thing didn't work out so well once they got a taste for my mom's landscaping. Huge shout out to you, mom. Thank you for your patience. So 23 acres of pasture is what I'm working on primarily. So I run two strands of electric fence, standard. I worked on a single strand very successfully for about the time period of September through December. December, I was leaving them in the packs for one week, so I would string up three strands for their winter paddock. Tried to return to a single strand once spring came, and they did okay until the lambs came. So basically what I did was I returned to square one, but with a more powerful charger. If you guys want to know what square one was for me, go back and one of the very first videos on this channel is electric fencing guide for beginners. Right now I'm working on a two joule charger that is powered by a 12 volt battery. It's been great. I don't know that I'll ever return to a single strand again but time is gonna tell on that front. My perimeter fencing is a really solid welded wire fencing. This was something we put in when we were not rotational grazing intensively. This was something that we actually really needed to keep our sheep out of the neighbor's pasture. They don't respect the barbed wire at all. They will slip through. If you have sheep that respect barbed wire, I would highly recommend that you sell breeding stock because that could be a good genetic trait. But we have this welded wire fencing around the perimeter and I will make my paddocks using this poly tape. But I can often get one roll of poly tape to span two lines, just depending on how wide my pasture is. And I'll just take a step-in post here, my favorite $1.50 step-in post from your local hardware store and I will just loop it around the step-in post and latch the step-in post to my welded wire fencing to create an easy way to loop back around for a second strand. What I'm sitting under here is one of my mobile shade structures. These are hog panels, which are covered in shade cloth. I have a DIY, full DIY on this channel, so I won't go into too much detail on the assembly, but I did replace the tarp in that DIY with shade cloth because it's more UV resistant. Freezing rain is a concern, and I wanna make sure that my paddocks include tree coverage in those cold and wet months, but during summer, shade is the primary concern for me and these portable shade units really do it for the flock. I'm able to set these shade structures on low fertility areas of my pasture. Maybe an area that's not growing anything or that's just growing a few weeds, if anything at all. And by doing that, by putting the shade structure there, a majority of the animal's manure output happens in that area. And so essentially I'm able to selectively build soil. I'm able to move those shade units, have that manure and fertility output right where I want it, and basically avoid having to spread fertilizer or that extra labor of putting down compost. It's just done for me through those portable shade units. My watering has been a little bit of a trick. I have for about 60% of my paddocks hose access and the remaining 40% I am going old school and I am bucketing water to the flock. Now the beauty of sheep is that they don't drink a lot of water, especially when the grass is at its peak and the grass is 90% water itself. 
The flock needs no more than five to seven gallons per day. As summer heats up, we are looking at about 15 to 17 gallons per day, and that is manually hauled by yours truly. And a watering system will likely be something I will invest in once I have information on just which paddocks need it and just what a good placement for that watering system would look like. Here's something to kind of encourage you in the direction of rotational grazing and that a slow rotation is better than no rotation. This flock lived on this property for two years before I bought it and began the intensive rotational grazing program. In that time, my parents used three cross fenced pastures to move the flock through in 30 day increments. That means that each pasture had about 60 days rest time before seeing animal activity again. What you see is probably 70-75% a result of those two years and 25% a result of this one year of intensive rotational grazing. Now the forage production is absolutely incredible. I have enough grass on here probably to run 100 or 150 sheep. Well, how do I know that rotational grazing is working? Do I actually have a direct frame of reference for improvement in my pastures over others? Well, the answer to that is just across this fence line. This is 15 acres that directly borders my pasture. What happens on this acreage is there are about 15 cows that come probably for nine months out of the year. Once the cows are on, they graze freely. A brief surveillance of this pasture shows that it is about 90% cockleburr and the other areas of the pasture the grass does not really grow past about five or six inches and the density of forage is very low. 